In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He He is is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Morning, welcome to Mass today on this Easter day. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Amen.
us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and glory, honour and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify, testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 
I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. 
for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate with joy the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. On that first Easter morning, as we just heard, the disciples found the tomb empty. And within a very short time, Jesus appeared to them, firstly to Mary Magdalene, immediately outside of the tomb. They were all naturally filled with joy at seeing him again, albeit in a transfigured form. They had believed in him, they had followed him, and were bereft when he was crucified on Good Friday. But now, all that had changed, and they were, quite simply, full of joy. But the Gospels tell us that they were also puzzled by what was happening. This reversal of death into life had taken them all by surprise, and they didn't know quite what to make of it. What could it possibly mean? It wasn't long before St Peter and St Paul were preaching and explaining the significance of Jesus' resurrection. Their teaching was that the resurrection proved that Jesus was who he had claimed to be, that is, the divine Son of God. The disciples would have been reassured that they had not been misled or mistaken by putting their trust in him. 
their belief that God was in Christ had been clearly vindicated. It followed that Jesus' message of God's love and power and of the need for people to repent of their sins and receive forgiveness was still valid, indeed valid for all time. And what is more, this message that Jesus had delivered to his own people was now to be taken out to the Gentiles, to the whole world. The covenant with Israel was to be extended to include the Gentiles too. And the disciples were given the task of taking the good news to them. The resurrection would have given them the confidence to do this and to be sure that God's plan and purpose for the world would come to fruition. That one day there really would be a new heaven and a new earth in which peace and justice reigned. The resurrection made it clear that the disciples were to continue and extend the saving work which Christ himself had begun. In that sense, the church, the Christian community, and that today means you and me, we were given the responsibility to take that message out, indeed, to become the extension of the Incarnation. The resurrection would also have convinced the disciples of how they should conduct themselves as they were spreading the gospel. They were to live out the teaching that they proclaimed. They were to live godly lives, lives which would anticipate here and now the life of the world to come. We mustn't forget that as Jews, they already had the teachings of Moses to guide them. But now, they also had the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, which demanded much more of them. They were to love their neighbours as themselves. That was already part of the Jewish Torah. They were to care for the poor and the sick, so was that. But they were to forgive up until 70 times 7, and that was new. They were to love even those who hated them. They were to turn the other cheek and not retaliate. It wasn't just a matter of not using violence. They were not even to nurse anger in their hearts towards those who oppose them. As the Sermon on the Mount says, they were to be perfect as their heavenly Father was perfect. The resurrection would have reminded the disciples that all the things that Jesus had taught them during his earthly ministry were the very words of God himself to be put into practice in their own lives. In this way, those who heard the gospel and repented of their sins would have a clear understanding of how they should now live their lives as new members of God's coming kingdom. So it was that the resurrection convinced the disciples of what they were to do and how they were to do it. However, such a direct experience of the risen Christ is not available to any of us. We live in another time and in another place. So how can we be sure 
of our role in all this? How can we be sure, those of us who have not seen the risen Lord and received his instructions, how can we be sure of what we are to do? Well, at the end of St. Matthew's Gospel, the words of our risen Lord tell us quite clearly The words of St. Matthew are that Jesus promised through his spirit to be with his people until the end of time. He will be with us until the end of time. So through prayer and worship, through reading and studying the scriptures, through reflection and meditation, through receiving the sacraments, especially the blessed sacrament of our Lord's body and blood, we can realise the presence of Christ with us now, that presence that he promised to us until the end of time. And we can play our part in extending God's kingdom so that the promise may come true that his kingdom of justice and peace will come on earth as it already is in heaven. Amen.
the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We pray that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. May the risen Christ break into the lives of all who live in doubt or fear. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. May all who suffer because of their beliefs find lasting justice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that God may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. We pray especially for the unemployed and for those who have no home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that by God's power, War and famine may cease through all the world. We pray for those who suffer violence in the Middle East and in Ukraine. We pray that your spirit of peace may descend upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that God may reveal the light of his presence to the sick. We pray also for the weak and the dying to comfort and strengthen them. We pray for all who live with pain or suffering, especially for Rosemary Foster, Charlie Taylor, Maisie Scarborough, Eleanor Moore, Derek Foster, David Wrigley, Barney Hughes, Susan Howe, Christopher Chu, Ron Jones, Elizabeth Cullum, Hill Boyfield, John Dixon, David Edsel, John Winterbourne, John and Arthur Smith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the departed may know the power of the resurrection and rise to the joys of the life eternal. We commend to his care those who have died recently, namely Brian Parry, priest, and those whose anniversaries of death fall at about this time, namely Margaret Lily Noble, Susanna Battelle, Janice Barker, Carol Gizia, Helen Ellis, Sony Cloudsley Seddon, Evelyn Freeman, Jean Harley, and Thomas Matthew Noble. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And rise in glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Rejoicing with Our Lady, we ask for her powerful prayers for us, as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, pray pray for us us sinners sinners now now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now in a moment of silence, we bring our own prayers and petitions before the throne of grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, have mercy on us and hear these our prayers, which we make in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with our spirit, let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept our sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is He and right so do. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of eternal life. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night as he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. So, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Michael, Saint Martin, and of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, This is the Lamb of God, 
that takest away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord, Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldst come unto my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection has delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Very happy and joyful Easter day to you all. Notice this for today. Time to bring the Lent boxes back in, now filled with money. Somebody said, what's this money for this year? It's to train more priests. Okay, that's what it goes to. Like the young man we saw at the beginning of the Additional Curate Society who organised this young man ordained of 23 to the priesthood. That's what we want. Not more old fogies like me. <laughs> that's what we want. So bring them in. I'm naughty, I haven't brought mine in. I'll bring it next week. So bring your boxes in. And if you like something completely different, the world of Gilbert and Sullivan, next Saturday evening here at church. If you'd like tickets, I think Helen will be able to help you with tickets for that. That's always enjoyable. And those of you who are observant, which I'm sure a lot of you are, would have noticed we carried in something at the beginning of Mass today. We carried in the holy oils which were blessed this week, the chrism oils, were blessed by Bishop Norman, our bishop, at Walsingham this week. So they've come back to the church now, we've put them in the ormbury up there in the altar, and in a few weeks' time I'm going to talk to you about the holy oils and explain what they all are. I think this is one of the big secrets in most churches. What are the holy oils and where are they kept? Well... Stay tuned in, and in a few weeks' time, you'll hear all about that, the holy oils. Now, would you please stand there? There's coffee is served today after Mass. You are welcome to have coffee with us. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you glory as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.
world who by the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, hath brought joy to the whole world, grant that together with his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.